everybody. Um, I'm going to do a short video over a question I was sent. Most of the time when somebody sends me a question, I just answer it over the email or whatever format they send it to me in. And I try to, you know, get that answer back to them really quick. But this one is such a good question. And it's a little bit more for the novices who are like beginning their knowledge in the jewelry world, which is amazing. I'm so happy to help. Uh, and I don't think to say that stuff a whole lot, and I should, um, I should go right back to the 101s of all of it, but she asked, and this is from Jolie Harrington, I know she's a reseller, and she was looking through my store, and I love that too, because I go through other people's stores as well to see, like, what are they selling, what are they doing, um, but she said, I noticed that in your store there was a high-priced item by Crown Trafari Alfred Philippe. And then she, you know, some nice messaging. And then, how do you know it's offered, Philippe? Is it the year? And does it have to be a crown? All excellent questions. I can't do it in a jewelry minute, so I'm going to do it in a short video. And I hope this helps you, Jolie, and everybody else out there who has this question. So who is Alfred Philippe? He was a designer for Trafari from the early 1930s to around 1966 or 1968, one or the other. And he worked for Cartier and Van Cleef before this. And it really shows in his designs just the very like fashion forward thinking and the imitation of this very extremely high end is Cartier to this, look at this gorgeous Trafari piece that could just pass for these amazing pieces coming out of the high fashion world. So here's a Pinterest page I found when I just Googled this. It had a lot of designs in one place and I thought it would be a good place to show you. Thank you, Phyllis, um, for you know, his designs, because she has so many of them pinned here that are from him. And when you're looking at these, I feel like it just looks like fine jewelry, which is stunning. And which is what we want to see most of the time. But you can see in his designs, they follow the trends of the day. He was very high fashion. He had a touch of whimsy to him. And I mean, it's just like how it flows through all the other uh, decades as well when he was designing. Here's the, you know, famous fruit salad that was like the tutti fruity from Cartier and the shoe button beads were very popular and they got, you know, because this was supposed to be like a carb ruby or garnet with the diamond in it. But, you know, he turned it into costume jewelry so everybody would be able to afford it. And it's just, it's amazing. It's an amazing story. And he did such stunning work. Look at this piece. That looks, that just looks like a fine piece of jewelry to me. So all of these pieces that he designed are extremely sought after. And it wasn't just because, oh, he was a head designer. It's because he was an amazing designer like amazing and you know since he worked for Cartier and Van Cleef um you can see so much of that like integrated into these designs okay so these are cheat sheets I've put together for myself and I've used them on other videos and now they're PDFs so you can print them or just have them on your computer so if anybody wants these, I'm happy to email them to you for free. Uh, and like I said, this is my work, so you don't have to worry about anything. It's not copyrighted or anything. Anyways, here is the Trafari one. And it shows the dates for each mark. And we can see here um, that KTF, which was, uh, I think it's Cushman... Trafari and Fischl, I think. I think that's it. Um, no crown. And then the Trafari here, no crown. 
so I just wanted to show you these because when you ask if there's has to be a crown no I call it crown trafari a lot of people call it crown trafari it's actually you know just trafari but it has this crown over it and you can see the dates kind of that they go through and also I don't have it on this sheet because I don't have a picture of it. It's a paper tag. And the first symbol Trafari ever used was a paper tag. And it had a crown over the T. And that's when it was just Trafari before Cushman and Fischl got in on the business with them. So anyways, uh, I hope this answers the crown question. Um, does it have to have a crown? No, absolutely it doesn't have to have a crown at all. They do need to be signed, though, because it even says on lots of their stuff, not authentic unless stamped Trafari. So they do need to be stamped. Are there unsigned Trafari pieces? Yes, I'm not saying there aren't. However, after 1940, there were none. So if you have a 1944 piece and you're saying it's unsigned, you're wrong because it is not authentic. Trafari was huge on their brand. And even here, I hate that they say it's either faded or was unmarked, unsigned. And that thing sold for $150. Now, here's a piece. Vintage Trafari Fruit Salad Brooch, unsigned. We know that this is 100% a beautiful example of, you know, the fruit salad leaf. Now, here's what the back should look like. And here's what the back looks like from the seller. It's actually not unsigned. The fur clip actually was broke and they're just using it as a brooch now. So here's something to look out for. Here's a person who has very high feedback and is, I feel like, straight lying about this piece, which makes me very angry. You can see here's the original piece that is stunning. You can see how the jewels are set. And this piece is so subpar, it's crazy. It doesn't have that wonderful trafarium um, plating on there. And they're selling it for $153. This is a very high-end piece from the Firebird collection. And I went to their store and started looking through to see if this was an accident or not. But they have this thing priced so low. And then all these other pieces are actually vintage nice pieces. And she has them priced pretty much appropriately. So, mm, I don't know. I think this is really bad. Don't trust, don't trust it if it's not signed. So one of my favorite places to find who designed a piece is at the jewelrypatents.com. I'll put the link in the description. It's uh, just a website with lots of patents and or, uh, you know, and the pictures. So we can come here. We can go to all these different places. I'm already on Trafari. You can just hover over the number and it gives you the designer, what the item is and the date that the patent was granted and if we go anywhere else like we go to drawing then we can see what will be filed at the patent office and here we have the date filed the date granted the number the drawing and there's his signature so that's always very nice and we can instantly tell from most of these who designed what and if we're wondering if we can just place Mr. Philippe at a certain time period that would be nice and very easy for us but of course that's not going to be the case because there's other designers working at the same time as him even though he was a lead designer he wasn't the only designer there was another designer I'm pretty sure his name was Spanny Spainy and he did some great designs as well but most of these are Alfred Philippe and you can find his designs on here up to I think it's 1955 and that way that that's that's a way to know if your piece is Alfred Philippe or not a very easy and good way and like I said most of them are his but here you go like 
this is a beautiful piece. It's by a different designer. So you can't just put them down to a certain time period, although like early 1930s to 1968 would be his tenure there. So you could kind of say that Alfred Philippe heir, but you know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that works because you can find so much about it. Now from then on, you're going to have to start looking more at advertisements, vintage advertisements in other places. Like I love Trafari.com. I know they're a store that doesn't matter to me, but uh, they have such great content on here. So I would like to find, I wish I could find a newer one, mm, a vintage advertisement. Let's just hit it. But a lot of, sometimes, not a lot of times, but sometimes these advertisements would have the name of the designer or coming here, it's really nice to just know that this is an Alfred Philippe piece. And let's say this was a 1960s piece, then it would be, it would, it wouldn't be on the patents. So having great resources like this from people who already know and have studied it and are very well thought of incredible um, to get like who the designer was. So I hope that helps on <laughs> how to recognize if it's an Alfred Philippe or not. So let's just do a quick little wrap up here that no, there doesn't have to be a T above Trafari for it to be an Alfred Philippe design. His tenure was between 1930s and 1968, so in that time is where you would find his designs. And also, you can find his designs on jewelrypatent.com and other websites, and they're not signed like his name. And please don't forget, unsigned Trafari is not authentic after 1940. Thank you all for spending a little bit of your day with me. And I hope this helped, and please come back and see me again. Bye. Lightning strikes by my window. It's my chest.